Hi guys and welcome to the final, final episode of Women in Media, Ministry, Motherhood and Work. And guys, I'm so excited to be seated and joined today with Rev Abby, who is from Salem International Christian Centre, my home church, as we talk about motherhood and work. This is a woman who is not only a mother, but she's a wife, she's a businesswoman, someone in ministry. And guys, she carries a portfolio, not a portfolio physically, one that has her accolades. Guys, she wears so many different hats and she thrives in them all and she gives some amazing tips on how you can brand you and also find out the unique selling points that would help you create your own very portfolio i've already booked my one-to-one session but guys please tune in and i hope you're encouraged and blessed and reminded that you can be all things that god has called you to be so let's hear the conversation good evening good morning good afternoon wherever you are and today i would love to welcome rev abby who is my auntie my reverend who personally goes to my church and i'm excited to have her here today um this is the final part of the series where we look at women in media ministry and motherhood and work and today rev abby will be talking to us about motherhood and work and what that looks like in a society in a time where there are stereotypes where there are biases and there is discrimination that does happen to women but we don't have to allow those things to affect us so i'm excited to have you here today rev abby welcome 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 Thank you. um and yeah she's an amazing woman and finally i feel like this is going to be a great time for me to actually get to know you sometimes you can do life with people but not know the life of the people yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so this is a great encouragement for me as well um but for those who are watching and for those who are joining us can you just share for us um what you do um yeah and who you are like what do you do yeah fantastic yeah i'm very happy to be here by the way and hello everyone watching um yeah so my name is reverend abby um as been as has been said um i always find this question um i won't say challenging but i always come up um with what i do which is a very non-conventional um, response and it always leads to more questions um but yeah i mean you know i'm a multifaceted person um i wear many hats um i suppose um primarily i'm a wife and i'm, I'm a mother um and in ministry i run the children's ministry of our church salem international christian center which i've done for several years now um <laughs> but um <laughs> Um, but outside of that, um, I do have a career. So um, primarily, I'm a CEO and founder of a consultancy firm, which I've called um, AGI Atom Consulting Services Limited. And basically what I do as part of that is um, I guide firms through their journey, strategic journeys in terms of digital transformation and any sort of strategic business or IT projects that they've got going on. And um, just by virtue of uh, where my career has come from, I do that primarily in financial services, in the capital market space. Um, but recently, the, do- the Lord has been opening some doors in education and in the health sector as well. Um, so, yeah, that's my pr- primary role in my career. Um, but apart from that, I'm also a board trustee. So I sit on a couple of boards um, and I'm also non-executive director. So, yeah, that's me, me in a nutshell. Well, if that's a nutshell, guys, then that's a big nut. <laughs> I can't even repeat all the accolades and the hats that you wear. But that's, that's, that's why I said it's very non-conventional. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm going to take the multifaceted, like you just, yeah, you do amazing and different things. And just to go back before I even delve into what you do now, um, what has that journey been because like for you? Because like you rightfully said, you are a wife, you are a mother you know did you always know that this is where you would be and and I mean for you you might say you're even still this is not the end this you're still progressing but was this always I don't know I am how old am I I'm 30 so let's go back a couple years just a couple years (laughs) when you're maybe in my shoes or even younger did you always know this is what you wanted to do how has that journey been from being single to being married having children is this always how it's yeah um well I suppose the the married and children bit yeah because I mean you know <laughs> we all want to be married and have kids so uh, I guess I, I you know that was always uh, part of the plan um, career wise that's definitely a no um, and I say that because um, very early on like you know when I was in school and all that sort of stuff uh, the plan was actually for me to become a medical doctor um, uh-huh. and I mean, probably not unsurprising based on my, you know, Nigerian roots, etc. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, in fact, I actually did, um, a year of medical school, um, but for various reasons, um, such as a civil war in the country I was in at the time, um, I mm. didn't get to finish. 
Um, and so, yeah, it then left me with a question in terms of actually what did I want to do at that time? And uh, for me, this was um, in the early 90s when, you know, all of what we know and love today in terms of technology was just evolving. Um, and that seemed like something to get myself involved in. Um, so, you know, I did various studies and, and, you know, sort of positioned myself so that I got into it quite early on. Um, but the, the short answer to your question is no. I mean, you know, where I ended up is, is nothing like what I thought, you know, where I thought I would be originally. Um, but I think it's really just a case of, um, just if I can use an anal analogy, it's really just a case of, you know, having gathered the right ingredients um, so that, yeah. you know, as I matured in life, um, I could sort of take the ingredients that I'd gathered and, you know, sort of put it all together and, and come up with, you know, a, something that's pretty good in terms of, you know, where I've ended up. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, uh, it's, been, it's been quite an interesting journey, and I'm sure we're going to talk about more about that over the, the next few minutes based on your question. Yeah. No, that's, that's really good, because I think um, even, I think growing up and sometimes being young or being a woman, you feel like you have to have kind of almost it set up and like know what the next step is and be going there and I think it's a good question leading on to about pivoting because I think for me as an example I studied law yet Nigerian background studied law did it for four years did a year abroad was a paralegal and then in 2017 I said I'm into media and film and my parents looked at me and said what <laughs> media <laughs> and who <laughs> and I pivoted and I left and I left all of that but sometimes um there is not everyone finds it easy to like, you know, you said you want to do medicine and then a war broker and there was other opportunities that arose. How was it like for you pivoting? So for, for you at that time, were you married? Do you have children at that time making that decision or how was that period? No, I was, I was, um, I was still single um, at that time. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, I think the whole medical school thing, I don't know if that really came from me or if it was like just something that was, you know, maybe it was just expected of me and I just sort of followed along as you do um, yeah. when you're at that age. Um, but no, I think, you know, really in terms of pivoting, I think, you know, anybody can pivot um, as long as you have the determination to do so. Um, and, it, you know, it doesn't really matter what age you're in uh, or you're at rather, um, mm. because, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of doing a pivot right now because I spoke about mm. consulting, which I do, and yeah. you know, I've done that for a number of years, um, but I'm now sort of pivoting into, you know, sort of board-based career. Mm. Um, and yeah, I think anybody can do it at any time. And it's really just a case of, you know, um, I'll go back to my analogy about the ingredients that you have, which could be, you know, based on skills or connections or passion and just using what you have um, to get where you want to be and, and really being strategic about it in terms of, you know, being able to, to work out, you know, where you want to be, what you've got now, what's missing, how you get there, um, and, you know, just being intentional and determined about getting there. So, and as I say, you can do that at any stage of life, is, is what I believe anyway. Yeah. Guys, you see, it's possible. You can pivot, but determination is the one thing you need to get there. Okay, so... You know, young single woman, law, not law, medicine didn't quite work out, but you pivot into you pivot into this new area. OK, so just jump in if you and I don't know the timeline, guys, so we're all learning this together. So you get married and kids come along. Mm -hmm. What were some of the biggest challenges? Or maybe you didn't have any that you faced pursuing a career, being a mother and a wife. Yeah, um, well, definitely challenges. <laughs> I wouldn't want to butter it up, guys. Uh, there'll definitely be challenges. I mean, just, you know, just by virtue of the fact that you have these um, three very important aspects. Um, well, mm. I'll call it four, actually, because, you know, you've got your marriage and obviously that's a once in a lifetime thing. You've got to get that right. Yeah. You know, you've got your yeah. kids um, and you yeah. know, that's very important. You've got to get that right as well. You've, you only get one chance at yeah. both. Um, there's your yeah. career, as you said, but there's some flexibility there because, as we just said, you can mm. give it as you need to. Um, yeah. And then, of course, there's your, your service in, in ministry, right? So all of those yes. things, you're having to juggle all of those things um, pretty much at the same time. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely challenging. Um, but, you know, God has actually, I believe, equipped we women to be able to handle multiple important things. Um, quite eloquently yeah. at the same time um, compared to men, if I can say that. Sorry, men, if you're on the call. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, God has just really equipped women to be able to do this. And, you know, things like time management are absolutely essential, absolutely key. Um, just being able to, you know, 
I'd say prioritize. Um, and, you know, that's not to say that any of these things are less or more important than the other overall, but they're just, there'll just be certain yeah. times when you'll just know that, um, you know, mm -hmm. by the prompting of the Holy Spirit, that look, you need to spend more time with your kids, um, you know, yeah. there's, there's stuff going on, you know, the Lord will just lead you and say, you know, you need to spend more time here, be it, you know, mm. your marriage or with yeah. your kids or with your, your career. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, it, it is hard. It is a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, just have that strong belief that the Lord has really equipped us, um, us women, yeah. to be able to handle these sorts of things. I mean, yeah. you know, just looking at uh, the Proverbs 31 woman, as, as we always do when mm -hmm. we're talking about womanhood. And you just look at yeah. her and, and, you know, she was doing so many things. Um, yeah. She was a businesswoman, you know, she was investing, she was doing all sorts of things. And mm -hmm. still her children and her husband called her blessed. So, you know, it is, yeah. it is in us and it is hard, yeah. hard, but we can do it. Yeah. And for you, I know you've, you've, um, you've, I've asked this question, but in terms of like, just practically speaking for you as well, how did that look like? Because I think sometimes, um, obviously I'm not a mother yet, I'm not a wife yet, but sometimes women or parents can beat themselves up because, you know, you want to be all things sometimes and you may fail in, you may feel like you're failing. Maybe I couldn't show up to that or maybe I couldn't do that. For you, how was that? I know you said prioritizing. Did you have like a, was there anything that you practically did that helped you prioritize? For instance, did you have date night once a week? Did you make sure that you went like, what's up, what was sort of the practical things you had to do to make sure that none of those, like you actually said, motherhood, ministry, work, you know, the children, none of that fell, fell to the ground? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'd say um, time management, absolutely essential. I cannot stress that enough, um, you know, as a woman, uh, regardless of your age I mean I'm you know saying the same to my daughters and they're you know 19 and 23 I'm telling them like from now you need to know how to manage yeah. your time because you know <laughs> if uh, you think you're having problems now when you're young and single imagine what it's like when you've got all these different other parameters to deal with so mm. being able to manage your time effectively to do what you need to do is absolutely essential but yeah as you say you know creating um, as part of that time management exercise just you know, carving out specific time to focus mm. on, you know, your husband, for example, having that mm. date night, as you said, um, yeah. definitely. Date night something yeah. that you still do now? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You, I mean, you have to definitely. It's like, you know, yeah. it's, it doesn't stop. And, you know, even kids, we talk about kids like my kids are, well, I suppose they're young adults now, but still, you know, every so often I have to carve out time to focus on mm. one of them you know it's not it's not yeah. even a collective thing where I can say right kids come here you know it's like they're different <laughs> individuals so I've got to focus on them individually um as yeah. I focus on my husband individually mm. um as and when I need to um mm. so so yeah and I think you know it's it's, a, it's an ongoing journey but um as you go along just celebrating the successes as well I think it's quite important um uh, with your with your family um with your close knit network as well um it's it's all part of what you know helps to make the journey a little bit easier yeah no that's good that's good and for you just lingering on this little bit here before we move on in terms of building your career and like we said all these different areas these four areas you numbered were there any sacrifices that you had to you had to make did you have to sac did any one of them had to be sacrificed in terms of maybe i know sometimes some women will have to put off their career for a little bit so they can focus on their house or they have to focus on their children so they decide they're not going to work did you have to make any drastic sacrifice or any sacrifice at all yeah I think you know maybe I'll answer that question um perhaps from the angle of what I know now based on what I knew then and, mm -hmm. and it's interesting that you you know you brought up that scenario where um a woman's got to sacrifice um her career um for her husband her marriage or, or mm -hmm. her children I mean you know to me I think those two things that you just mentioned there are probably the most important things, um, you know, I definitely would not be advising any woman to sacrifice um, spending time with her husband or bringing up mm. her children um, because she wants to build up her career. I definitely would not be recommending that to anyone, um, you know, and, and, you know, speaking from personal experience, I think maybe looking back, I didn't always get that balance right. Mm. Um, so, you know, that's why I'm quite vocal in terms of, you know, giving that advice to anyone both here and anyone I can speak to to say, look, your marriage, your children, and your, you know, your walk with God, your service to God, those are important things that, you know, yeah. don't sacrifice any of that because you're building up on your career. Yeah. Because, um, you know, really, I'll go back to my analogy about ingredients. As you're doing those things, um, you're actually acquiring more ingredients that eventually you can use to build up your career. And it might not be at that time when you think you need to be building up your career, 
Yeah. But eventually all of that, you know, you'll have all the ingredients and you'll be able to put it together to build up a career that's fantastic and even better than, than you had imagined. Wow. No, that's good. No, that's good. Thank you so much for sharing. Hopefully that's, that's, um, for anyone watching that's encouraging to see and just to hear i think looking back like you rightfully said there were things you may have done better but don't sacrifice your children or your husband for your career those are like i guess those are like the the key ingredients you need <laughs> so if yeah. you sacrifice that i don't know how I'll put it this way i think you know uh, and there's always this uh, analogy that that is quite commonly um spoken about you know on their deathbed no one's ever said they spent more time at the office you know it's always about oh i wish i'd spent more time with my husband or my wife or with my children mm. or with god you know, yeah. no one's ever said, oh, I wish I'd spent more time at the office. Yeah. No one. Or, you know, more time building up my career. No yeah. one. You know. No, that's that's honestly true. Think about the end. Have the end in mind. <laughs> and it probably won't be your career you'll be raving about. No, that's good. And final question just on this bit in terms of, um, you know, like you rightfully said, these sacrifice. How do you deal with guilt? I think I have a friend who just had like two two kids and sometimes um, dealing with guilt as a mother is a thing that people beat themselves up about. Like, I don't know if you, I don't know if fail to make it to one child's performance or maybe you missed out on something that was you know critical or you feel like you can't be part of this dealing with guilt as a mother because I guess in making sacrifices there's things you're gonna have to say no to naturally and things you're gonna have to decide to say yes to what would you encourage yeah. to anyone dealing with that sort of mother guilt or well I think you know it's probably it's, that's probably a follow-on from what we just said right so if you take that stance that look my children, my home, mm. my uh, ministry, my work with God or my walk with God are the most important things. Yeah. You know? So therefore, if um, Junior's got a play at school, that's going to be important to you. Mm. Right. You know, it doesn't matter what's happening at work or with your clients. You're going to say, right. Sorry, guys. Um, you know, I'm not available after X, Y, yeah. whatever time it is, because Junior's got a play on at school. Yeah. You know? So and as long as you have that outlook that, look, this is important and you prioritize it. I mean, yeah, fair enough, it's not always going to be able to happen for whatever reason, but at least you would know within yourself that you tried your absolute yeah. best and you really prioritized it. So, you know, that I think would help to, to minimize any guilt situations. I think it's really just that situation in a situation where you've maybe compromised, mm. you know, you said, right, um, you know, I'm going to try, I'm going to try, you know, but yeah. you know, if something comes up, you know, I won't be able to, that's when you might start to feel guilty. Mm. But if you've really been determined from the outset that look this is what i've got to do this is important to me yeah. and you made every effort to make it um you know and i haven't always done that myself and this is something that i've learned along the way so you know. yeah <laughs> um and you know i'm still practicing now um you know it's interesting that you, you spoke about um your friend who's just had two kids i mean i've got two kids but they're young ladies now and i've still yeah. got to make these you know these these priority calls yeah um, and really just sort of you know make sure that i'm prioritizing the right things yeah uh, so it's an ongoing ongoing situation yeah no that's good thank you thank you so much for sharing that's good I think like you rightfully said having your values that uh, what do you value and if it's your children and your family then you always make sure that those priorities are not pushed under by other things Correct. okay so you know like you said you've gone from single you're now married you have kids and your career is blossoming like you've got you've set your priorities you're balancing having the one-to-one -one time with your children you've got date nights with your husband you know ministry is going well as well you've got your priorities in place and obviously your career is now blooming as well or it's changing it's adapting it's it's molding um as you've come obviously moving on from medicine and into the financial services and now having this portfolio what were some of the challenges you faced along that did you did was your womanhood ever something that you had to think about like when you were rising to be this CEO and this boss woman and yes I've, I've got it up <laughs> was your woman and were you ever were there ever any insecurities that you faced or were you have you always just been someone that's been determined and you've just kind of crossed crossed the paths as it were um no I think it's been an evolution um you know because as, as I said earlier um I started off my career in financial services and you know this is going back to the early 90s where um, back then, there were not a lot of women in financial mm -hmm. services, not to talk of women of colour. Yes. Um, so <laughs> I was a kind of standout person um, back in those days. So, so yeah, you know, it was, it was a very male dominated industry, um, you know, so it's, it's, yeah, it was hard um, mm -hmm. in the beginning. But I think part of that um, difficulty was just about... Um, me not knowing how to 
work my way around the environment if that makes yeah. sense mm -hmm. um and i think you know it's 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 quite interesting that you know today like roll forward 20 25 years yeah. um that is all about equality you know people mm. talking about um you know women and diversity yeah. and you know ethnics and all this sort of thing mm. so you know i think um for the up and coming women i think you guys um have a really really um good solid um baseline to really mm. be able to you know to build something for yourselves and really position yourselves because you know back in those days when i was just starting off my career um as i was saying it's you know male dominated environment yeah. a lot of male sort of bullish conversations happening yeah. and then there wasn't really a lot of what you have today in terms of being able to speak up and being able to challenge mm -hmm. you know yeah. so the fact that that you know all of that is quite acceptable these yeah. days i think is definitely definitely a plus yeah um but for me over time you know i i once I sort of found my feet and, you know, um, became a bit more confident, I started to challenge, um, mm. you know, I'm still What did that look like? <laughs> what does that look like? What does challenge look like for you? Well, what, what that looks like is that, you know, just, um, I could be in a meeting, of course, I'd be the only female in the room, um, and, you know, a table full of, of men and having their sort of boyish conversations or managed conversations. Yeah um some of which might refer to women in a certain kind of way and I'd be like um guys you do know there's a woman in the room you know and, and oftentimes they to be not too fair to them a lot of times they you know actually just maybe just forgot that there was a woman in the room wow. um and so I think you know just I, I quickly learned that you know just mm. being able to speak up and sort of challenge in a polite way so I'm not being aggressive yeah. or anything like that but just being able to speak up I think helps um to make things more comfortable for me and also helps people on the other side to sort of yeah. think you know before they say something before they do something to sort of think yeah. oh well you know how is Abby going to take this you know yeah so <laughs> that's good no I love that I love that because I think sometimes you know sometimes your silence can be you actually speaking by saying nothing so I think mm -hmm. being confident enough to say or like you said there's a woman in this room you know that that yeah. is that is a good uh, like you said and I think I like the fact that you said that you're not um being rude or aggressive about it but you're just bringing it to the surface in case you forgot by the way guys yeah <laughs> I am here exactly which is which is good and I guess in those um environments when you have been the only woman have you felt like you can contribute and also be a part of the discussion as much as anyone else in the room as yeah so again that's that's um that's that's been sort of a, a learning process I think um because I, I think well as we all know um the way men communicate versus mm. the way women communicate is quite different yeah um and so you know over time I, I think I I started to understand that a bit more. So yeah. it's not it's not that I started to communicate like a man. No, <laughs> it wasn't. I mean, I'm still communicating, hopefully, yeah. um, but, <laughs> like a woman. Um, but I do that in in you know from a place of understanding mm -hmm. um, of how men communicate. Mm -hmm. um, so most women, their natural state is to speak in in a sort of soft and very gentle voice. Mm -hmm. you know? Um, but that doesn't really work in, you know, when you're in a sort of meeting or forum setting with a uh, room yeah. full of men, you know, you have to speak in, in a fairly sort of loud and assertive way. So that, it, you know, that's something that I learned over time. Wow. No, that's good. That's good. And um, just speaking about your career some more now, I know obviously now you were speaking, maybe you can explain even to me, you know, about this portfolio. So you said you're multifaceted, you've got different yeah. portfolios, CEO, you're a trustee how i don't know how long i don't know what's the right question what's the time span of your career that we're looking at where you progressed maybe from the financial services to where you are now do you know yeah. i don't know this is on the spot question but a rough time span of how long it's taken you to build up to where you are now uh well in total my my career spans over 25 years wow. um but the the portfolio career part of it um has really just evolved over the last i would say five years okay um, so I guess in essence, what I'm saying is that, um, and I think I said it earlier, mm -hmm. um, I could have started earlier if, you know, I mm -hmm. had a sort of slightly different mindset or, you know, I knew certain things then that yeah. I now know kind of, kind of thing, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a portfolio career, anybody can have a portfolio career and you can start it at any time. Um, and so what is a portfolio career for anyone who's listening that doesn't know what is yeah that? sure so a portfolio career is, is basically um, a career that consists of you doing multiple 
things, different mm -hmm. things, um, simultaneously or maybe not, you know, all at the same time. But you know, you've got something going on in each of these different um, aspects that you're focused on, yeah. um, and effectively means that you can have um, multiple streams of income. Yeah. Um, and it also means that you um, get to choose what you what you're mm. working on um, because okay. you know, you're going to focus on things that um, you're good at, things that you're passionate about, yeah. things that are current. Um, and often when I talk about this, because um, I've spoken about it a number of times, um, I speak about ikigai. I don't know if you have heard of this. Um, no. I'll it. It's um, I K I G A I. Okay. And it's basically um, it's a Japanese term. Um, and it's effectively referring to brand you. And basically okay. what it's saying is that everyone has got a unique brand. Everyone has the ability to formulate their own unique okay. brand. Mm. Um, and if you take like, um, like a Venn diagram, you know, where you've yes. got circles and yeah. they're overlapping, and you've got a slice in the middle that overlaps yeah. all the different circles. Um, that is basically the brand you. And it's effectively a combination of what you love you know, what you believe the world needs right now, what you can be paid for, and what you're good at. So it's really just focusing on you. And, okay. you know, it's really just a, a chance for you to focus on those four aspects mm -hmm. and find that space in the middle that sort of is an intersection of all of these things. Okay. Um, and yeah, that, that, that's basically your brand. That's basically your portfolio career. And it's, you know, wow. it's a number of different things. And some of it could be the traditional sort of, you know, doctor or lawyer that we were talking about. If yeah. you, know, you just happen to find yourself in that place, I mean, why yeah. not? You can stick with that career, um, but you get to intermingle it with other stuff. Mm. Um, I remember the last time I gave a talk on this topic, I was, I was um, speaking to a young lady who, um, studying to be a doctor, um, but she actually loves art mm. and she's created, you know, she, she paints. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think up until that point, she had been quite torn in terms of, you know, I'm studying to be a doctor, but I love art. Mm. You know, does not mean I need to give up my art because I'm, you know, yeah. so there's, but the, the whole concept of this Ikigai is that, no, you don't have to give up a part of you that you love or yeah. that, you know, that you believe the world needs, you can combine all of this stuff together um, into a portfolio career. You know, you can do as many things as you, as you want. For some people, yeah. it'll be two, some people, it'll be three. For me, it's, I think it's about four at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, yes. Um, and um, yeah, you can create this portfolio career. And the beauty of it is um, that it's all driven by you. And, you know, it's wow. driven by your God-given gifts, for example, you know, yeah. I was talking about the lady who, who was really good at arts, you know, mm. it's all driven on, on it's you centered. And I know yeah. a lot of times it's, you know, people sort of shy away from you centeredness. Yeah. Um, but if this means that, you know, you're spending your working hours doing stuff that you love and that you're good at, that in itself helps to make your life more balanced. Yeah. Um, and means that you can enjoy life and, and create and manage your time effectively so that yeah. you, know, you can do all the things that you need to do with your home, your husband, your kids, your ministry, etc. No, that gets me so excited. I think even currently, like the stage I'm in and like just the journey I am, I've always felt, not always, but sometimes I felt like I've had to choose one thing, like I can't do this and I can't do that. So I think you're hearing about that and just, yeah, being able to know that you can have this portfolio, you don't have to tie yourself down to one thing and that's it. And you're sitting there always wondering what would it have been like if I had chosen X, Y, and Z. So for me or even someone else, like, so when you, sorry, can you repeat, is it Iki, Iki who? Ikigai, I-K-I-G-A-I, Ikigai. I-K-I-G-A-I. Google it. I-K-I-G-A-I. <laughs> I-K-I-G-A-I. I'm going to look at it after. So Ikigai. So once you've established, okay, you know, I've listened to this now, but Rabbi says, I do not have to be a one dimensional woman. I can be, I can have this Ikigai. I can have this portfolio. What does that practically look like? So for instance, let's say I like to host, I like to film, I like to produce. Um, yeah, let's just say those are my three things. Do I then, so obviously one I'm doing now, I know that I'm filming. Um, the other avenues that I know I enjoy, do I then actively look for areas that will allow me to, I guess, serve in those areas, but also then prioritize when I can do each of those. Yeah, so time management is, is yeah, is the overarching theme okay. um, across all of this, because, yeah. you know, we're talking about having um, two, three, four dimensional, dimensional career, 
and mm. you're married and you've got kids and you're doing your ministry work. <laughs> so, you know, time management is like overarching. Here. Yeah. But as we were saying earlier, God has equipped we women. We can do it. We can if do it, guys. Yeah. <laughs> if you're intentional about it um, mm. and you're strategic about it. Um, yeah. You know, so I guess to answer your question, um, depending on how far you are along your journey on the other facets that you're looking to pursue, um, you know, it will determine what you need to be doing now. So, mm-hmm. you know, I do you, um, simple things like, do you have a network? Do you know people that are already in this mm-hmm. um, industry or sector that yeah. you're looking to get into? Um, if not, well, you need to, you know, think of ways to, to build up a network, to attend yeah. certain events, for example, or mm-hmm. maybe you need to do um, a bit more research or, yeah. you know, more analysis in terms of what it takes to, um, to get into this sector or to thrive in this sector. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it really depends on, on how far you are yeah. along your journey um, for each of those dimensions. Yeah. Um, so for me, for one of the dimensions um, I'm pursuing at the moment, um, I, I've got myself onto um, a board development course, or should okay. I say the Lord got me on a board development course because it's definitely him. Um, and you know, this was after I've been through a process of you know digging deep, um, doing research, finding out what I need to do, where I need to be, where and who I need to be networking with. Um, so yeah, it really depends on on how far you are along the journey. Yeah. So you can't just wake up, of course, anyone watching and say, okay, that's great. I want to be this portfolio woman and not do the work, do the research. Oh, no, you, you got to put in the work, <laughs> definitely. definitely. Put in the work. Because listening to that now, I'm like, look, there's work to be done. Because I can't remember the phrase, but I think it's a master of everything, master of none. I'm paraphrasing it probably wrong. Mm-hmm. But is it important then for this portfolio woman that you establish? So for instance, I've just, I'm literally graduating tomorrow, for example. Um, I've just finished doing a course, Caramel Television Production. So I'm obviously going to enter that career and I have other things I want to do, but let's just say that's where I'm at. Would you then encourage for that person to, well, keep going in this steadfast, you know, build up your skills and, you know, build up yourself and then maybe attach something else and then, or do you do it all simultaneously? Yeah. Well, I think that's, that's an interesting question. I mean, for me, um, I've, I've kind of, I've mapped it out. Um, so, you know, I always like to take a sort of strategic lens mm. on these sorts of things. So, so I've, mapped, I've mapped it out in terms of, you know, what, what are the different dimensions mm. that I see myself getting into. Okay. And then for each one of those dimensions, I sort of map out a plan in okay. terms of, you know, what I need to be doing, you know, this month, this quarter, this year versus next year. And mm. I do that and, and, you know, even beyond. Yeah. Um, and I do that for each of the different dimensions. Okay. Nice. Um, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, that does make sense. So you basically have a map, a route for each and what that looks like. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, and as, as I need to, I change things. Right. So, you know, if wow. I if I think of something else that I'd like to add in like a different dimension, I'll yeah. add that in. Um, yeah. Maybe something's not as hot as it once was. I'll mm. take that out. And then, you know, also the timelines. I mean, we just come yeah. out of a pandemic. So, <laughs> you know, sometimes your plans have got to be flexible. Yes, 100%. Flexibility, adaptability, key, key, key. Well, after this, I'm going to book a session with Rev Abby, guys. I'm going to go and sit down and be like, Rev Abby, this is the portfolio of who I am. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've got so much wisdom. I love, I love that. And just mapping it. I think sometimes seeing a blueprint and seeing how people do it just it gives you possibility and just say, okay, this is actually possible. Um, and, I, and I love that. Again, like I said, the multifaceted woman is, is possible, but it's not just a wake up and have titles, but no skills, nothing that backs it. There's no route. There's no direction. You've got all these great ideas, but you don't necessarily know where you're going. So I love that. Um, and obviously like you've shared, you know, your um, career span, everything that you've been doing, how is it, how has your husband been, Rev Ori, my uncle, how, how, how was that? Because um, sometimes having, sometimes people suffer where they're so driven, but maybe the man isn't. Or maybe the woman feels like she has to put herself down because he's not there. That might not be your story. Um, probably isn't. But how how was it? Have how was your husband supportive for that as well with what you were building? Yeah, but I mean, very supportive. And you know, that's not to say that the journey has always been smooth. Yeah. Um, so I've been married now for over 20 years. We've been married mm-hmm. for over 20 years. <laughs> and uh, you know, obviously a lot of what we've been talking about, um, you know, kids, career, all that yeah. sort of stuff has has kind of you know evolved alongside of that. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I think um when when you get into a marriage, um you understand that um, you know your partner, your wife, or your husband is going to have their own 
goals, their own career ambitions, mm. um, and that you know really you're there to support them in any way that you can. Yeah, um, it could be um, moral support, it could be financial support. It will definitely be prayerful support. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, and so you know that's that's just that's been our journey. So you know mm. we we are in different. Um, uh, sectors or you know different career paths yeah um but you know part of the the joys or benefits of being married is that you know you can you can use your partner as a soundboard mm. uh, you know just sort of get that fresh perspective in terms of you know you know this is what I'm thinking in terms of you know what I want to do this year next year next over the next five years you can get that fresh perspective yeah. um, from your spouse uh, which is always good and of course you know you've got someone who's got your back yeah who's either giving you that physical or, or um, moral support but it's definitely giving you prayerful support yeah um and um you know what i was saying earlier about celebrating success mm. you know having someone there who, who you can celebrate that oh, yeah, yeah i've hit that milestone you know yeah. my exam or whatever it is you know yeah so, so yeah, that, that's pretty much been our journey, to be honest, um, you know, just supporting each other in terms of what we're looking individually to achieve yeah. in, in our careers. Yeah, no, that's amazing. And so with you, um, I know you said doing a little maps for the different areas that you, your, let's say your different four areas for your portfolio. Is that something you would do by yourself and then present to him and be like, look, this is what I'm planning to do? Or how does that practice? Because obviously, if you've got a big plan this year, you know, maybe yeah. you want to fly around and do all these conversations. <laughs> <laughs> do you kind of, obviously, I'm sure you go to God in prayer. Then do you present it to them and be like, yeah, babe, this is what I've got planned. Do you want to have a look and let's sit down and. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I'm, I, I mean, I, I, I don't share like the full, I mean, I've got it in a format and I think probably I can understand that format. Or, well, I am the Holy Spirit can yeah. understand that format. Um, so I wouldn't like I, I don't like take the, the raw format if you like yeah, yeah. And, and show it to him but I'll sort of give him the gist in yeah terms of, you know what I'm looking to do this year mm -hmm. or, or this quarter this month whatever um, yeah. and you know just run it past him mm -hmm. get his views um, fresh pair of eyes yeah um, and yeah that's that's been how that's worked amazing guys this is such an exciting interview I'm really still stuck on the icky guy <laughs> I will book my one-to-one -one with you but um just because of time as well um I've got probably like three more questions um and okay. I think for young women there's this pressure I think I kind of referred to it before in a different way but there's almost a pressure to have a job be married own a house have a kid by 30 have your career sorted I use I use the number 30 just because I think in my generation 30 was always and has always been like, oh my gosh you're 30 now and I'm like yeah I was 29 yesterday guys it's just one year, <laughs> just 30 today. Um, but there's almost that pressure and almost to the point whereby some people start having serious depression, you know, uh, mental health issues, low self-esteem, feeling almost like they failed. Um, you know, pressures from parents as well, because, you know, mommy's knocking, saying, okay, you finished school, you're working. Wait. You know, there's just all types of pressures outside the house, in the house. What would you say to, um, I guess, young women like myself to encourage us on the journey, like, you know, I think you said your career was, I think you said 25 years span. You've been, yeah. So there's been a number of years behind what you've been building. Um, mm. And I know Rev Abby looks young, guys, but she's not 25, I promise you. <laughs> but, you know, there's been a time span of building this and building this portfolio. What would you say to, like, young women like myself who are on this journey now? Yeah. Um, well, I would say um, to definitely maintain a strategic view mm. on everything. And, and basically what that means is that, you know, all that you're working towards um, is not for the short term, mm. it's for the long term, right? So, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, it's building up towards what you'll be able to say your story is in 25 years time, right? Yeah. So, you know, and I know there's, there's, I know there's always pressure, you know, from mothers. I mean, my daughter's going to be 24 this year. So are, you are, you are you pressuring her already? <laughs> we want grandbabies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but yeah i mean you know always keep a strategic view um you know in terms of whatever you're doing now what you're working towards it's not for what you're going to be able to say next year although you know obviously you do want to be able to say something next year in yeah. terms of how you've progressed yeah but it's about the long term you know yeah. it's about what your story is going to be in 25 30 35 years time yeah you know? Um, and I think if if you maintain that strategic mindset and that mm. strategic perspective, 
yeah um that will help you to deal with any sort of external pressure um that you know you might be getting from parents or yeah or <laughs> the weather it may be and just because you alluded it alluded to it um and no like you said you have a 24 year old and you want grandchildren how do you in terms of related now as mother to child how do you have those conversations how do you deal with you know maybe some I know in, some parents will tell you that when I was 24 I was married when I was 28 I had three like they've had it all like, how do you deal with that like um as a mother knowing that okay, I've got two girls and I, do you have those conversations with them guys is anybody yeah 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 definitely although you know for me I got married when I was 30 so you know I can't okay. put too much pressure on my 23 <laughs> year old at the moment okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, um but no I think you know for me I just I just at the moment I just um sort of drop little hints um you know sort of um let them know what's expected of them eventually yeah you know, in terms of you know getting married having children all that sort of stuff mm. um but yeah all that we've been talking about in terms of ikigai and brand you yeah. and you know having that portfolio career I mean my 23 year old is just starting her career my 19 year old is still in uni yeah um, but I'm still trying to drop in these little seeds um yeah. you know I, I think um just focusing on the career part um there's there's this saying by this guy called um I think it's Nassim Talib Mm. Um, where he talks about um, how a monthly career, I mean, a monthly salary rather, is one of the most addictive things in life. Um, mm. you know, so I'm really trying to make sure that they don't get too fixated mm. um, in, you know, a office-based or a job-based career where, you know, you're sort of waiting for this monthly salary to come in. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's just little things like that where I'm just dropping in little seeds, little hints, little nuggets yeah um, as part of my conversation with them um yeah yeah, yeah. that's amazing because I feel like one of your daughters has is it a jewelry business she sells like yeah yes yeah, yeah I know it does doing medicine right yeah she's pre-med yeah she's pre-med, pre-med. Yeah. <laughs> amazing. amazing. No, that's that's so good. So good. Thank you so much for Rabbi. I mean, there's so many questions I could keep you on here for longer, but I will save that for my one-to-one but just a final question um thank you so much for the wisdom by the way you shared hopefully you guys watching this there's so many nuggets tips advice you can go away like time management like you said sings along everything that we're doing but they're definitely principles or ikigai that you can use to just help you begin to map and navigate um brand you you know i feel like everyone should get a t-shirt brand you brand me yeah Yeah, absolutely (laughs) Um, but just a final question just to ask and i've been asking everyone this question if you could meet any woman in the bible who would it be and why ah yes yeah um yeah so i think for me that would have to be rahab okay um yeah and um obviously you know she she was a a prostitute when we first meet her in the bible Mm. but i would like to meet her because i want to find out more about her story um Mm. you know the the, um, bible doesn't really tell us the full story in terms of how she got to become um a prostitute but it does tell us about how she was able to you know negotiate um, you know, a safe passage for herself and her whole family um, at that time when uh, the Israelites were, were um, getting into Jericho. And then yeah. you know, the Bible does also tell us about how uh, afterwards um, she eventually ended up getting married. Mm-hmm. And then she ended up being, uh, you know, in the lineage of King David. And so therefore the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's something about that woman. And I yes. really want to find that, if, you know, if I could, I'd really want to find out more about her because she's just yeah. so intriguing. I feel, um, you know, um, how she just managed to navigate, um, pivot, mm. as you said earlier. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I think I would, I would pick Rahab. No, amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you so, 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 so much for sharing. It's been an absolute pleasure having you. So many lessons, so many things to learn. Um, I'm excited to like just watch this back. And yeah, I keep saying Ikigai because I think I've learned something new. <laughs> literally the Japanese way like honestly so thank you so much um for your time and yeah I definitely feel like I would have you back somewhere down the line because there's just so much wisdom and I think the older generation speaking to the younger generation and just pouring into us and encouraging us there's, there needs to be more of that done we have the peer-to-peer but the older yeah I think yeah so thank you guys so much this is the final series is the final episode but hopefully we'll be back with more so thank you Web Abby and see you soon